Welcome back to the Library Show. My name is Lisa Cleary, and I am here with Dr. Emily Lembeck. She is the superintendent of Marietta City Schools, and she started the Marietta Reads program in 2000. And we also are gonna to talk today about the One Book Challenge. So, Dr. Lembeck, thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. You launched Marietta Reads in 2000. To give our viewers a better understanding of the program, can you give us an overview of, of the Marietta Reads program? Well, Marietta Reads really is a, not just a school system, but a citywide, community-wide focus on literacy and development of literacy and just the joy of literacy as well. Um, the goal was really to inspire our children um, in three ways. Um, well, in terms of the entire Marietta Reads program, that is, to have our students read more, uh, read better, meet read more widely, those three things. Um, we couldn't do that on our own. Uh, as you know, it takes uh, a village very often to really help our students to get where they need to be, no matter where they start. So therefore, um, Marietta Reads was developed um, to, number one, encourage those three things in our students, also to get the community to support us in our efforts to do so, and then to have our adults serve as literacy leaders and role models for our, for our youth. That's awesome. What inspired you to develop this program? Uh, even way back then, it was becoming very apparent that um, there was a lot more information coming at us um, through the internet. Um, and I think, reflect, um, I think back uh, on that and I say, wow, it can't possibly be that we've had the internet in our lives this long, but we really have. And it was really becoming very uh, clear that our students were going to really have to become more critical readers. And in order to do that, they would have to read better. And in order to read better, they would really have to enjoy reading and find reading as a reward. Um, so therefore, we began to find ways to help reward them in becoming readers. And that's where getting the community involved would help us as well. Uh, teachers were spending lots of money out of their own pockets to incentivize students to do things. And one was reading. They would have a treasure box and whatever it took to get students to really want to read and feel good about it. Um, so um, we began to raise funds. We had the community support us. We partnered with our public library. In fact, our mascot, Marietta, has a Cobb County Library card in, it, in his or her or its back pocket. And um, at any rate, um, we were enabled to develop a whole reward system for students that when they achieved certain goals, by demonstrating reading comprehension using the accelerated reader for books that they read, they would receive these different um, recognitions. And it just has grown. Um, I'm very, very proud of the fact that it has not just sustained, because few things in public education really do sustain uh, for as long as this has, has been with us. It actually has grown, which is really very positive. It is, and it's definitely had a huge impact, a positive impact on the students in Marietta City Schools. It's also had an impact on Marietta. Can you talk a little bit about the impact that this program has had on the city of Marietta? Um, it enabled uh, the city of Marietta to um, become an all-America city in 2006. Uh, three specific projects were supposed to show uh, a city that was really making a difference for its citizens. And Marietta Reed was one of those three projects because what it did is what Marietta Reads was doing is was setting a tone that this is a city this is a community that values literacy um, not just for students but for also adults because once again uh, we wanted our adults to serve as literacy leaders and role models for our students 
That's awesome. And each year, Marietta Reads picks one book for the One Book Challenge. Can you tell us about the book that's been selected this year? Oh, I love the book that was selected this year. Um, the Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. A fabulous read in, in any jargon. But um, this book was inspirational. Um, as I read it, I just wanted to keep reading it because it, it told about um, a young boy uh, living in, in extreme poverty uh, in Africa um, and what this young boy did um, through his own initiative, um, taking scraps that others would throw out and building something that would ultimately bring electricity to his village. Um, we also liked it because it had a student component as well. We have the boy who harnessed the wind for students. Um, so we wanted a book that our students could read and parents could read as well. Um, so we um, developed the challenge um, and the challenge was read the book and then challenge others to read it. And we're able to do that um, on our website. There's a link where you can go um, to um, find out how you can join the challenge using social media or not. Um, but, you know, um, the idea was brought to me this morning by our communications director um, who has a young child saying her child can challenge his friends to read the book, which I think is very positive as well. That's awesome. And I hear whole classrooms are going to be reading the book in Marietta City School. Absolutely. Whole classrooms are going to be reading it. And um, it's, it's an enabling students to really look at something um, through new eyes. Um, this will be a new experience because e even our students who um, may not come from economically privileged backgrounds and homes will see this level of poverty and struggle as something very, very different. And realizing what this child could do in the story can really help to inspire them to move forward and accomplish incredible things, even as a young person. That's awesome. So can you tell us how all of our listeners can actually participate in this One Book Challenge? Mm -hmm. Once again, go to the website, um, MarietaCitySchools.org, and you will find um, our link right on the front page of our website. Um, when you click on that, it will take you into our Marietta Reads website. Um, there's lots of things you can do um, uh, and other ways you can become involved in Marietta Reads. But um, it will tell you exactly step by step how you can use social media, hashtags, whatnot, or how to contribute in other ways and how you can post what you're doing or not. But you can always challenge others to read as well. Um, one of the things I'm really proud about is, is when you talk about getting books into the classrooms and into the hands of children. Every year, for those who have not been involved with our kickoff on Marietta Square, we have an enormous kickoff of Marietta Reads for the year there. And there must be thousands of people of all ages that come and participate in the celebration of literacy. And also, many who go home literally with bags full of books, gently used books that have been donated, um, that have created libraries throughout our cities in homes where there were none before. So um, join the celebration of literacy. Try our one book. I think this one will really amaze you. Um, and I really appreciate the opportunity uh, that the Cobb Library is, is presenting and partnering with us on this as well as many other things. Dr. Lundbeck, thank you so much for your time today and thank you so much for sharing about the One Book Challenge with us and I just challenge all of our viewers to actually read The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind and thank you. Looking for a way to warm up this winter? Your Cobb Libraries offer you a fun way to warm up with the Winter Warm Ups Adult Reading Program. To participate, come into any Cobb Library and pick up a tic-tac-toe board. Read any three books or listen to any three audiobooks in categories like fiction, nonfiction, mystery or romance, a novel by a Georgia author, or a book with a cover you like, or choose a book of your choice. 
Fill in three squares in a row with the titles of the book that you've read, and then fill out the form with your name and contact information. Bring in the completed board back to any library for a chance to win that $50 gift certificate. There are plenty of hot novels to choose from. For the fiction category, try James Patterson's sizzling novel, Burn. Detective Michael Bennett investigates a burnt body left where a strange party has been held in a condemned building. A scorching, fast-paced novel full of suspense. If that's not hot enough for you, try Rachel Kushner's Flamethrower, an incandescently detailed and dramatic tale of creativity and destruction. Reno, a 20-year-old thrill seeker, goes to New York to pursue a creative career in the raucous 1970s art scene. She joins a group of dreamers and storytellers, falls in love with a strange son of an Italian motorcycle scion, and ends up in the middle of a radical so social movement in 1977 Italy. The book was named one of the 10th best books of 2013 by New York's Book Reviews and was a National Book Award finalist. Be ready to laugh out loud reading Jennifer Cruzy's and Bob Mayer's novel, Agnes and the Hitman, a romantic co comedy full of action and adventure. It's guaranteed to warm your heart and have you laughing out loud. To complete the Georgia author category, you can choose authors like Steve Barry. He's written a series of historical fiction books that feature former Justice Department operative Cotton Malone who can't seem to stay out of hot water as he globe trops across the world on spine-tingling quests. In The Lincoln Myth, Barry's latest book, Malone tackles the secrets of Mormonism, a U.S. Senator's stealthy succession plan, and a history-shaping letter that was handed down through the executive line. Or cozy up to Manon Ballard's Miss Dimple's mystery series set in Georgia in the 1940s. Miss Dimple Picks a Peck of Trouble, Ballard's most recent novel, is filled with period charm and a wonderfully brave band of amateur sleuths. Choices for nonfiction category can include books like Boys in the Boat by Daniel Brown, a true story about a group of working class youths from the University of Washington rowing team that defeated a field of elite international rivals at the 1936 Bur Bur Berlin Olympics, a Cinderella story sure to warm your heart. Or a biography also works for the nonfiction category. Unbroken by Laura Hildebrand, initially released in 2010, is still a hot title because of the recent release of the movie. This award-winning winning, number one New York Times best-selling bestseller documents the inspirational true story of Louis Zamperini, a juvenile delinquent turned Olympic athlete and World War II pilot, crashed into the ocean and survived for weeks on a li life raft only to become a pr prisoner of war. There's nothing like curling up in your favorite chair with a good book to warm you up. So come in today and pick up a tic-tac-toe game board. Turn it in by March 20th for your chance to win a $50 gift card. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of the show. Thanks for coming in for the interview. Oh, yeah, of course. All right, we got your personal references, your resume, high school diploma or equivalent. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Yes, it's right there. Great. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon, and I'm here at the Vinings Library with Elizabeth Puckett Hello. for her school-age program, Full Steam Ahead. Elizabeth, what is Full Steam Ahead? Well, Full Steam is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And we'll do a couple different experiments every week that touch on one topic. This week we are doing milk because yesterday was National Cheese Lovers Day. And the 11th of this month was the first time milk was delivered door to door. Excellent. And you will be making plastic out of milk today. Sounds interesting. <laughs> okay, how do I make plastic out of milk? First of all, grab the bowl. 
Okay. Add one cup of milk. Whole milk, skim milk, soy milk. 1% or above. 1% or above, okay. And milk. Four tablespoons of vinegar. Vinegar. Okay. We cheated it's and put it in baby messy. food jars. One, two, three, <laughs> four. Okay. And stir. Stir it up. For about a minute, and you'll see it starts to kind of get solid. It's bubbly, mm -hmm. it's bubbles. And then we're gonna go heat it up in the microwave for a minute. Okay. And you'll have lost it. All right, we'll go heat this up, we'll be right back. Okay, my milk and vinegar has been heated in the microwave and it looks a little solid. So what do I do with it now? Now you're going to strain the liquids from the solids. Liquids, okay. It's glumpy. Okay. Wow. That's plastic out of milk. Mm-hmm. And just kind of let the liquids drain off. With, you're kind of getting curds in the, floor yes. at the bottom. And then you're going to make it in something like this. Excellent. So after it's been strained out and smushed together, you mm -hmm. end up with plastic yep. that can be molded. Can I put this in the oven? No, it needs to air dry and it should take about 48 hours. Okay. And it's what we actually used to make buttons and jewelry out of. Wow. So if you've got like a 1950s dress, that's what your buttons are made out of. Milk. Excellent. What else are your STEAM kids going to be doing today with milk? We are going to discuss surface tension by tie-dyeing some milk. Wow. So, Very cool. That's right over there and we'll show you how that one works. Excellent. Okay, Elizabeth, what are we doing at this station? This is going to be surface tension with milk. You know how if you look at the edge of a glass, you can see the water kind of pull away from the edge? Yes. We're going to be doing the same thing with milk. Okay. We've got a cup of milk. This has to be whole milk. So. Whole milk. Okay. And pick a food coloring. I'm Do you want to pick green? green. I love green. Put okay. a few drops of green on top. Okay. Just in different spots. Mm -hmm. And you notice it's going to kind of float on top. And I have a Q-tip for you covered in dish soap. The dish soap is going to break down the fat in the milk, reducing the surface tension. All right. So where do I touch this? Touch it to any of the colored dots. Oh. Oh, wow. Now that is cool. Milk art. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can add another color and watch the two kind of run away from each other. Oh, neato. All right, let's put a yellow in there. And we'll touch that. Oh my goodness. Elizabeth, this is very cool. Milk painting. Mm -hmm. Excellent. We're putting Let's. Food coloring in the milk, and then we're grabbing some dish soap, like, like here, mm -hmm. and then we, and then we put on, and then we put on the exact top of the milk, and then it makes it it makes the whole thing explode, kind of. <laughs> oh, I think that's your you want to put I put a lot in mine. Can I put a different color in it? Yeah, you can put a different color in it. Awesome. Like this. I put a Make lot sure in you keep mine. putting dish soap on it though, because that's kind of why the color started. Is y'all exploring? Okay, Elizabeth, thank you for having me at Full Steam Ahead today. Thank you for coming in. I do story time at the library, mm -hmm. mostly with the little kids. We read and we sing. This is obviously a very different type of program for kids at the library. Why is this sort of program important? It's important for the same reason story time is. Mm -hmm. You're in story time exposing kids to early literacy skills. We're exposing kids to early kind of basics and different science programs, exposing them to the different vocabulary like polymer, monomer, mm -hmm. things like that. You're also piquing their interest. If they're interested in something here, they're more likely to seek out information about, say, what chemistry is or physics. And there's no test no, at the no end test. of the program. You, there is no grading, and <laughs> you usually get to take something home that might mess up your mom's car. 
and you might make a mess mm -hmm. in the library and that's that's always fun you might even get to run or eat in the library while you're here not things you normally get to do all right well thank you so much thank you so much stay tuned there's more of the library show coming up after this when is the last time you read a book? Research shows that students who read improve vocabulary, develop an excellent background for future learning, improve academic performance, and develop a lifelong habit that will enrich their experiences. Clearly, reading is important for student success. Together, we can encourage students to read more, read better, and read widely by being role models for literacy. Find out how to join Marietta Reads at MarietteReads.org. Did you know that Georgia's libraries provide resources for people who are legally blind or physically unable to handle a book? That's right, and Pat Herndon, director of GLASS, is here to tell us more. Hi, I'm Pat Herndon. I work for Georgia Public Library Services as director of GLASS. GLASS stands for Georgia Libraries for Accessible Statewide Services. We provide Georgia's access to the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, or NLS's Talking Book and Braille program. It's a program offered to any eligible and enrolled resident in Georgia who needs to have audiobooks or Braille because they can't hold a book or turn the pages. Glass is a very important service. We're here to meet the needs of anybody so that all citizens, all residents can be participative. You can stay up on current events. You can talk about the same books your friends are talking about even if you can't hold a book and turn the pages or see the words on the page. You, everyone has the right to read. It's reading for all. This is important. It's our mission and we're here to make reading accessible to everyone who wants to. To get started in the program, a person needs to get an application. The GLASS website has our application online. It can be filled out. It needs to be then certified that somebody is attesting to the fact that the person filling out the form has a disability of some sort. Um, most disabilities, a librarian can fill it out. So if you're in the presence of a librarian, um, a physician, a service provider, a social worker, a rehabilitation counselor, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist. Anyone can fill one out for any physical disability. That includes vision impairment. No one can sign one off for a family member. So if your brother is a physical therapist, he can't sign it off for you. But anybody else can. And like I said, including a librarian. So you could actually carry one into a public library, stand in front of the librarian, and they could sign it. If the impairment is a reading disability, there is a little bit more of a hoop to go through. A physician has to sign off for a reading disability. This includes dyslexia. On the form is the address. It can be mailed back, postage free, to our office in Atlanta where we'll get you enrolled, processed. Within two days of receiving the form, we contact you talk to you about what type of books you like to read, how many books you want to have on hand. We take it from there. We do the heavy lifting of helping you select your books. The books will be mailed to your home if that's how you prefer. Or we can inform you on how to do your own downloads and download them onto your own um, flash drive that you can use with one of our digital talking book players. We mail you the talking book player at no cost. Any problems ever happen to it, you can mail it back to us at no cost using the Free Matter for the Blind program. This device is the digital talking book machine. This is the advanced version. It's got a lot of navigation keys. We do have one with a few less keys, but we find most of our patrons prefer this machine. Very rock solid, very well designed. It can be dropped. It can be carried around. It's got a rechargeable battery. For people with low vision, you see there's high contrast in the color of the buttons that you use to turn it on and to play and to adjust the volume. Each button also has tactile um, ridges on it so that you can learn what the machine feels like for the people who truly cannot see. 
The volume can be adjusted. It can take headphones, so you can listen to your book in private. It can take a pillow speaker, which we can provide to you for someone who is bedridden. They could just plug this in and listen to the speaker right next to their pillow. It will play flash drives of audiobooks, so if you're already used to downloading books from your public library, you can actually play MP3 books on this machine as well. And of course, it plays our digital books, which come in cartridges. The books that are available in our service, they look kind of funny. Um, they come in blue cases that are our mailing cases. They look like a cartridge. They look like a cassette, but they're really a flash drive. And our collection is materials that are very much like what you would find in any public library. Think of our collection as the assistive technology to keep you connected to your public library. We have bestsellers. We have books that appeal to all ages of readers. We have children's books. We've got the full Joni B. Jones all the way up to James Patterson. So we've really got everything. We do have nonfiction books as well. And we have a very well-rounded collection of materials that mimics what's in a public library. In addition to our audio books, we have audio magazines. And in addition to that, we have access to Braille. In Georgia, we do not keep the Braille collection in our state. However, if you're enrolled in the program, you need access to Braille, we'll get you enrolled and signed up. And the state of Utah mails out our Braille to our patrons. Any customer can go to AMLAS, which we're going to rename it. We're going to call it GLASS. We've got a lot of program changes going on just organizationally, how our program is set up. But for metropolitan Atlanta, in our central area, right on, on the MARTA line for people that need um, public transit and for people that use paratransit, at the central branch of Atlanta, Fulton Public Library on the fourth floor is our library. Right now it's called AMLAS. If you walk in there, we don't have a huge collection of books there, but we have staff ready to assist you. Books can be downloaded there if you're an enrolled patron. We do have a small selection of books. We have a children's area that has print braille books, which are really neat. It's a braille overlay of a children's picture book, which are some of the most amazing things to see. Not every child that is suffering vision impairment is fully blind. They can still appreciate the color on the page. And better than that is they might be learning braille and an adult could sit with them and read along. So that's pretty cool. We also have a computer lab that has assistive technology. We've got screen reader software. We've got magnifiers available, um, the closed circuit TV magnifiers, and everything that can make access to information easier. If people want to find out more information about GLASS, about Georgia's Talking Book and Braille program, you can call us at a statewide 800 number. It's one 800 248-6701. Except for holidays, we work Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, answering the phone and assisting our patrons. We'll be happy to send you an application or we'll likely direct you to our website, which is www.georgialibraries.org slash G-L-A-S-S. Glass, Georgia Libraries for Accessible Statewide Services. For more information about GLASS, visit www.georgialibraries.org slash GLASS or call 1-800-248-6701.